morning. It's uh, September 29th, uh, 2020. Time is 9.57. We'll bring the response to re resistance review board to order. My name is Larry Schmidt. I'm the Director of Personnel Professional Standards. I will have the rest of the uh, board introduce themselves along with OGC, the Academy, and Gun Ranch. My name is Jackson Short. I'm the uh, Division Chief for Professional Standards. Lieutenant Brian Healy, Commanding Officer of the Body Worn Camera Unit. Felipe Alicea, uh, SWAT Commander. Assistant Chief Lolita Smith, Communications and Property and Evidence. Gabby Young, Office of General Counsel. Tony Batchers, Training Sergeant. Gabriel Rose, Firing Range. And Lieutenant Heal Healy will be the floor lead for today's board meeting. Thank you, Director. Good morning. Um, you guys all met with Detective Shouse and filled out the proper paperwork. Any questions on that paperwork? At this time, I'm going to swear you in. If you would raise your right hand, you s I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God. Yes, sir. Um, I'm now going to read the confidentiality notice. Uh, based on the current state of law, these proceedings are considered confidential and are not subject to disclosure until they become public record. Therefore, anyone participating in these proceedings is prohibited from willfully disclosing any information obtained during this process including the nature of the questions asked, any information revealed or documents furnished in connection with these proceedings until they become public record. Um, I'm going to read the purpose of the RTR Review Board. The response to resistance review board conducts administrative reviews of incidents involving certain uses of force by members of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. These reviews are conducted to ensure adherence to agency policy and training consistent with state and federal law. The Sheriff's Office affords substantial deference for the instantaneous judgment and decision making that must be used by law enforcement officers in si certain situations. However, the deference does not permit any member to depart from agency policy, training, or professional standards of reasonableness. Since the ability to use force is such an extraordinary license given to law enforcement officers, the public looks to the Sheriff's Office to monitor and regulate the uses of force. At today's hearing, this board will assess the appropriateness of actions of all involved members based upon the facts and circumstances known to each member at the time of his or her decision to use the force. I'm not going to turn it back over to Director Schmidt. So I will be invoking the rule of, the, of exclusion, and all testifying witness officers uh, will have to leave the, the hearing room until uh, they are called to testify. If you would, Officer Ledger, you can have a seat with Good morning, Detective. Good morning, sir. If you would identify yourself, your name, ID number, your assignment, and then you can go ahead and start with your presentation. Uh, yes, sir. I'm Detective Glenn L. Workentine. Uh, ID is 7461. I'm currently assigned to the cold case unit. This presentation is the officer involved incident. It was documented under CCR number 18-791121. Occurred on Friday, November 16th, 2018, at 16.04 hours. The incident occurred at 1405 Melson Avenue, Jacksonville, Florida, 32254, which is located in Zone 5, Mike 2, subsector of Jacksonville. The officer involved is Officer J.A. Ledyard, ID 76081. At the time of the incident, he was uh, in patrol, task force, Zone 5, watch for gold. He was currently at FTO at the time. This night he was acting as an FTO riding with a recruit. His date of employment is 8-3-2015. His body-worn camera was issued to him on November 6, 2018. On 11-16-2018 at 16.01 hours, Officer J.A. Ledyard, ID 76081, and Officer J. Gariga, ID 70140, we're engaging in active patrols of two-man unit, FTO, and recruit in the area of West 5th Street and Detroit Street. The officers observed a black 2018 Nissan Maxima being driven in a reckless manner. The driver of the vehicle was driving to excess of the posted speed limit and committing numerous traffic violations in the residential neighborhood. <coughs> Excuse me. The vehicle was operating in a reckless manner before the officers were able to get behind it and attempt a traffic stop. Due to other radio traffic, the officers were unable to get on the radio to call in a traffic stop. The officers activated the emergency lights and siren in an effort to stop the car. The driver, later identified as James Zarkai, began to actively flee by increasing his speed and erratic driving pattern. 
The driver began to make sudden stops as the suspect, later identified as Tyrone Buckman, opened the back passenger side door and attempted to flee the vehicle. The driver stopped briefly at 1405 Melson Avenue and Tyrone Buckman fled out of the passenger side back seat. Officer Gariga observed Mr. Buckman holding a silver handgun and shouted a warning to Officer Ledyard. Officer Ledyard chased the suspect as he fled down the driveway of the abandoned house at 1405 Melson Avenue while Officer Gariga attempted to cut off by going around the other side of the house. The suspect ignored commands to stop resisting and made a threatening movement with the handgun at Officer Ledyard. Officer Ledyard fired four shots from his Glock 17. The suspect was struck once in the lower part of his torso. The driver, James Zarkai, continued to flee in the vehicle until he crashed into a ditch and fled on foot. His DNA was collected on the deployed airbag and he was eventually arrested for fleeing and attempting to elude. Mr. Zarkai pled guilty and is currently in prison for aggravated fleeing and attempting to elude. The suspect's DNA, Mr. Buckman's DNA was found on the Taurus handgun. He pled guilty to possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and is currently in prison. Body worn camera. Officer. This is from Officer Ledyard. Is this after the shooting, obviously? Pardon? Is this after the After the shooting, yes, sir. As we watch, can you explain that 30 second buffer? What a 30 second buffer is that camera's continuously recording um, through it, but there's uh, whenever it's off, the officer, when he taps it, it'll go back to that 30 seconds. You won't hear any sound, but you'll see the video from that point. Don't move your hands. 30 seconds. Don't move your hands. I'm fine. I shot him. The timeline of events, 160305, Officer Gariga, Mike 247, advises of a reckless driver, which is a, comes across as a signal 12 on the radio. Hey, Mike 247, signal 12, about to bail. 
1603 at 11, HQ puts out the alert term for Mike 247. 1603-16, Officer Gariga provides their current location and vehicle information followed by direction of travel towards Melson Avenue. So we're at 30 Dina Street, go heading west on uh, Dina Street. The black Ultima, Florida Cat, Golf, Romeo, Tango, Tango 570, Signal 12 all over the roadway. Third Street and Texas Street Circle, heading out to Melson Avenue. 1603-41, Officer Gariga, on the radio, it says there's three black males about to bail at Melson and Fifth. Passenger just bailed out with a pistol. Got three old mics. One's about to bail right now on uh, Melson and Fifth, right here in the light. Passenger just bailed with a pistol. Section L357, Sergeant I.J. White Jr., ID 67883. His call sign 678 comes up on the radio, say he's monitoring the situation. 678, I'm monitoring. 16.0407, Officer Ledyard comes on the radio, shots fired, shots fired, got one, he threw the gun. 247, shots fired, shots fired. I got one, he threw the gun. 16.0420, Officer R.R. Harris, ID 62824, comes up on the radio asking where you at, Joe. Joe re referencing to Officer Ledyard. Where are you at, Joe? 16.04.22, Officer Griega uh, provides we're behind the house, shots fired, vehicle still traveled north on Melson Avenue. So we have one black male down right now. We're behind the house, HQ, shots fired, vehicle still traveled north on Melson Avenue. We have one black mic down right now. 16.04.40, Lieutenant J.M. Parrish, ID 7880. Uh, his call sign is 185, asking for them to start K-9 in the air unit. 185 starts K-9 in the air unit. 16.04.55, Officer Rodriguez advises, we've got one suspect shot. We're about to render aid. The vehicle traveled north on Melson with two other black males. we got one suspect shot. We're about to render aid in just a second. No, I don't do that. The vehicle traveled north on Melson with two other Bravo Mike's drivers. Diagram of the scene provided by the crime scene unit. You got Melson, out, Melson Avenue out here in this area here, the driveway. That's abandoned, abandoned house, 1405 Melson Avenue, garage shed, backyard. Items one through four are nine millimeter casings from Officer Ledyard's firearm. Then item five is the pistol, which was recovered on the rooftop of the uh, shed, which was adjacent to the uh, backyard there and items 6 through 18 are basically items that rescue um, whenever they were treating the suspect um, we pulled stuff out of his pockets and his clothing items like that there's aerial photos taken of the um, incident location kind of general area you have West 5th Street Norman East Agar Boulevard and Melson Avenue this one here the 1405 Melson Avenue actually this residence right here We've got a closer up of it uh, you got Melson Avenue this is the garage and this is the backyard of the residence and that's the general area where the incident occurred so uh, seen photos from that day at 1405 Melson Avenue just showing the front of the residence better picture as far as the approach going down that the driveway to the garage and they'll go over into the backyard here through the fence picture the placards there are one through four which are the uh, shell casings and six through 18 where uh, the items taken from the suspect you can't really tell it but there's a placard there showing where the pistol was recovered and placard just showing basically where the suspect went down at and where they treated him and all the stuff that was taken from him This uh, incident occurred obviously during the day, just it was uh, going to uh, sunset. These pictures were taken uh, prior to as they're collecting the items, it's just showing where the nine millimeter casings are located. And uh, you got pictures of each casing with the placard by the adjacent placard. Uh, this one here is uh, the actual the pistol from the top of the garage. 
It was unloaded. We took uh, there was five live rounds inside the firearm. We did the ATF trace on it. it was a Taurus model 445 45 special serial numbers Quebec Echo 532535. Uh, trace. Uh, provided that the firearm was purchased by a Christopher Ramsier on 8-4 of 97 and stolen at an unknown time during his move from Tampa to Jacksonville. The suspect fled from the car was a Tyrone Maurice Buckman, state of birth to 115 of 88, 30 years of age. He's, uh, his prior history was convicted felon for burglary two times. He had multiple arrests for drug possession and sales and multiple arrests for resisting without violence. This incident, he was arrested for possession of firearm by a convicted felon and resisting without violence and uh, he's currently sentenced to eight years for those charges of the Department of Corrections. The driver of the vehicle, uh, James Lewis Zarkai, his date of birth 11 Ford of 83, 35 years of age. His history is convicted felon for possession of firearm by possession, I'm sorry, convicted felon for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Multiple arrests for drug possession and sales. This incident, he was arrested on a warrant for aggravated fleeing or attempting to elude law enforcement officer. He's currently sentenced to two years Department of Corrections. Officer Ledyard's firearm, he utilizes Glock 17 9 millimeter, serial number at 13 live rounds in his magazine, one live round in the chamber, and four shell casings were recovered. And disposition letter from the state attorney's office. Uh, this letter advise you that you, our review of the shooting investigation of Tyrone Buckman is now complete. After a full review by our officer-involved incident team, we have concluded that the shooting of Tyrone Buckman was justified, or justified under applicable Florida law. We will provide a detailed report of our review to you in the near future. We are notifying you of our legal opinion now, though, so that you can take any internal administrative actions that may be necessary. Detective uh, shot four times. He hit the suspect one time. Can we account for those other three rounds? There was a canvas done around that immediate area of the uh, residences uh, by patrol. They contacted a couple houses, and there was no strikes to any other buildings or anything. And there were no calls later on in the week where somebody had found a bullet hole in their house. Later no, sir. On. Okay. No further questions. How about um, any videos? Surveillance video from any of the houses? None of the houses. Um, there was some video surveillance, uh, after, not of this incident, but whenever the car fled, it eventually crashed at 3000 block of Melson Avenue uh, near CSX rain, uh, railroad tracks. We got with <laughs> CSX police at that time. They had video, but nothing, it really didn't show. There was witnesses that saw two black males flee from the vehicle after it crashed, but nothing on the video that really showed anything. About any civilian witnesses to this police shooting? No, there was just an ear witness. I think next door neighbors had heard the shooting and looked out whenever one, I think a, there were some juveniles uh, under the age of 16 that were next door that were talked to. Um, actually, did they saw the officer shooting but didn't know, couldn't see because of their vantage point because of the garage was blocking the view. That's all. Thank you. There were several officers on the scene. Did any of them capture body one footage of anything prior to the shooting or during the shooting? No, ma'am. Most everything was captured after the fact. Thank you. And the suspect's gun had five live rounds according to the ET report. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you, Detective. Yes, sir. Detective Schaus, we get Officer Bariga. Sir, just remind you, have, you have been sworn in. Um, you have the blue guns and radios if you need props to show what your, your actions were during this incident. Um, you can start anytime you're ready. Okay. <coughs> uh, you know what? 
just identify yourself, uh, your ID number, and your, your assignment at the time of this incident, please. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is uh, Josue Garriga. My ID number is 70140. And at the time, I was uh, assigned to Officer Ledyard as his recruit in phase two. Um, so on November 16th, 2018, uh, we were assigned to the Mike 2 subsector. I, again, I was in phase two of training, so I was driving with Officer Ledyard as his recruit uh, while patrolling the Mike 2 area, um, specifically in the Detroit Street area. Um, myself and Officer Ledyard observed a black Nissan um, driving southbound on Detroit Street at a very high rate of speed. Uh, caught both of our attentions. Um, we proceeded, well, I, myself uh, driving, proceeded to try to catch up to the vehicle. Um, observing the driving patterns that were very careless and reckless in nature, actually blowing a stop sign uh, at Detroit and Fifth and almost uh, T-boning a uh, box truck that was actually clearing that intersection. So I was able to gain um, speed to able to catch up to the vehicle, um, initiated my patrol, blue lights and sirens on the vehicle to conduct a uh, traffic stop due to the traffic violations that the car had uh, made. Uh, the vehicle quickly turned onto West 3rd Street from Detroit Street, um, again, initiating my blue lights and sirens. Uh, at the time, the car came to a stop briefly. Uh, the back passenger door uh, actually flung open. Um, nobody exited the vehicle. Um, at that point, I thought they were going to fail, but they didn't. Um, the door actually closed back and the vehicle proceeded to, to drive away from the traffic stop. Uh, so a very short pursuit did ensue. Um, we came out onto Nelson and drove northbound on Nelson Avenue. And about a few houses short, because I wasn't, they didn't know the address at the time, about a few houses short, the vehicle came back to a stop again. Um, and then the back door, the same back door, passenger side flung open again, but actually black male exited the vehicle. I immediately threw the patrol car in park. Myself and Officer Ledyard exited the uh, patrol vehicle with the lights still activated, and I think the sirens were still activated as well. Um, at that time, I observed a black male exit the vehicle uh, with a handgun in his hand. Um, the way he was holding the handgun actually kind of caught my attention because it was very unusual in nature. Um, I've been on several traffic stops, numerous traffic stops I've chased numerous individuals that have uh, carried guns during fleeing um, traffic stops and typically uh, majority of the time they've always had their um, guns in their waistband or do you mind if I grab a blue gun to kind of clear <clears throat> shouted out to Officer Ledyard, hey, gun, 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 to let him know because I wasn't sure if he observed the gun coming out of the passenger side of the, uh, the patrol vehicle. So Officer Ledyard gave chase um, behind the, the suspect. Uh, I can put to so Officer Ledyard gave chase down the driveway behind the suspect. I ran over to the southern side of the house. There's a fence on that side over there. Um, that's where I ran towards to try to cut the suspect off because I knew that back there behind the yard goes into some residential areas. So we're going to try to, you know, cut the suspect off to prevent him from fleeing any further. Um, by the time that I got to the side of the house where the fence is at is when I heard the gunshots. So I was unsure if the gunshots came from the suspect or came from Officer Ledyard. Um, I immediately cleared the fence. I observed Officer Ledyard um, holding lethal cover um, towards the ground. I immediately ran, got online with Officer Ledyard, um, removed my service weapon as well, uh, held lethal couple, cover on the suspect. The suspect was laying um, face down on his stomach. Um, Officer Ledyard notified me that he had shot the suspect, uh, and that he did not know where the gun was at. So given the unknown of where the firearm was at in, in the suspect's um, grasp or his vicinity, 
uh, we continue to hold legal cover, cover excuse me, on the uh, suspect. I got on the radio, um, radio for uh, notified dispatch that shot that the fire, um, that we needed more additional units. Um, <clears throat> called for rescue as well. At that time, I observed Officer uh, Aldridge come from the eastern side, jumping the fence, coming into the backyard where we were at. He came online as well. Officer uh, Jung also arrived on scene. Um, at that time, I felt we had enough officers to um, create a plan to basically get in and remove the, uh, the suspect out of the area of where the firearm could, could have been to uh, handcuff him and to uh, give um, medical treatment to the uh, suspect. And that was the end of my involvement. Thank you. Um, you were in phase two of training, so you were newer, a newer recruit, but you said you've done numerous traffic stops and have chased people with guns before. Um, do you have any previous law enforcement experience? And if so, just let us know where that is. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I came from the Putnam County Sheriff's Office for six years before coming to JSO and being a phase two recruit. And did you do any specialized units in the Putnam County Sheriff's Office? Were you just patrol or were you detective division? Yes, sir. I did several specialized units. I was uh, narcotics for four years. Um, I was in the canine unit as well, and I was on SWAT for five years. So you, so you understand what a reckless driver is. Yes, sir. Um, you, and by our policy, he was reckless before you initiated a traffic stop? Correct, sir. Were there any civilians? You, you talked about a, he almost T-boned, a, a, ran a stop sign, almost T-boned a box truck. Did you notice any civilians walking around or other traffic on the road to, that alerted you to his driving and what made it reckless? Yes, sir. There was other vehicles on the roadway, not just only the box truck. Um, which, again, his driving pattern made me feel that if we weren't to stop him, that he was going to cause um, harm to other pedestrians or potential other vehicles <coughs> on the roadway. So without you taking action, he probably could have harmed a, either a, someone walking or another vehicle? Absolutely. And uh, did the suspect utter any statements uh, before the camera initiated? Did he make any statements to either you or Officer Ledger? Um, not that I recall. I have no further questions, Chief. Sure. So you initiated a vehicle pursuit on the um, driver because he was dangerous to the community? Yes, sir. Then why'd you let him go? Say again, sir. Why'd you let him go? Um, so you, gave, you gave him up to chase this other guy. Yes, sir. Well, I felt that the passenger that bailed out of the vehicle with the handgun also posed a threat to the community as well with a firearm the way he was carrying it. Um, so at that time, the, uh, the suspect holding the handgun to me was more of a threat at that time. Okay, so you stopped the vehicle pursuit to initiate a foot pursuit because the passenger got out with a gun? Yes, sir. Okay, no further questions? Lieutenant Alicia? No questions. Chief Smith? No questions. Uh, you did not have a body worn camera issued to you at that time? No, sir, I was in, uh, in as a recruit in training and we didn't get issued a body cam at that time. Nothing for them. Okay. Thank you. If you would just stand by in case we have any follow-up questions. Yes, sir. Officer Ledger. Good morning. You're ready to identify yourself and your ID number and your uh, assignment at the time of this incident. I'm Officer Joseph Ledyard. My ID number is 76081, and my assignment was a field training officer. I was in Mike 2 at the time. Go ahead and tell us what happened. On November 16, 2018, I was working as a field training officer, and Officer, or, or, uh, officer Gariga was my recruit at the time. He was driving my marked patrol vehicle and I was riding in the front passenger seat. At approximately 16.03, we were patrolling the area of West 9th Street and Detroit Street. <clears throat> At this time, we both observed and we briefly discussed the excessive speed of a black Nissan <clears throat> that was traveling southbound on Detroit Street. The vehicle was driving at a high rate of speed, um, and it ran the stop sign at Detroit Street and West 5th Street. 
there was a white box truck that was headed westbound on West 5th Street uh, when the vehicle ran the stop sign at West 5th Street and Detroit Street traveling southbound. The vehicle swerved to avoid that white box truck and when it did so, it lost its tire traction. When it recorrected, it went into oncoming traffic on Detroit Street, the northbound income, um, oncoming traffic on Detroit Street. Um, as it uh, recorrected and turned westbound on West 3rd Street Circle is when Officer Garriga uh, had managed to catch up to the vehicle and activate his emergency lights and sirens. Um, the vehicle then went southbound on Dina Street as uh, Officer Garriga put out of her dispatch that there was a, if you heard the first um, dispatch that was put out, that was when he stopped at Dina Street and 2nd Street Circle and the back passenger door opened. That's when we believed that the suspect was about to bail. He did not, and the vehicle continued westbound on 2nd uh, Street Circle. That's when Officer Garriga put, first puts it out over the radio that we have a, um, a signal 12 and they're about to bail. When it continued westbound on uh, West 3rd Street Circle, um, it then continued northbound on, uh, I think it's 3rd Street, Third Street Circle South, and then back out to uh, uh, westbound on 3rd Street, Cir Street Circle South to Melson Avenue and went northbound on Melson Avenue. At a 1400 block of Melson Avenue, they um, stopped the vehicle and a black male with a medium build and a hat on his head exited the back passenger side uh, door of the vehicle. When he did so, um, he was I could see that he was gripping an object that crossed his waistline, if I could demonstrate for you all. I heard Officer Garriga advise gun, gun, as he exited the vehicle. Um, so I pursued the suspect on foot, uh, drawing my department issued firearm as well. Um, as the suspect entered the backyard of 1405 Melson Avenue, um, the suspect sidestepped to the left in what I would call a juke move to enter into that open uh, fence, the northern part of 1405 Melson Avenue. Um, permission to demonstrate exactly what he did. The suspect entered into the backyard of 1405 Melson Avenue, and I followed the suspect into the backyard of 1405 Melson Avenue. He continued in a southeasterly direction, running across the yard. Um, and as he did so, I planted my feet. I issued a verbal command to drop the gun. The suspect did not comply. Rather, he turned to his left, crossed the firearm over his body, and turned towards me, pointing the firearm in my direction. Permission to demonstrate? Please. At this point, fearing the imminent threat of gunfire um, and great bodily harm or death to myself, um, I believe he was going to shoot me. I discharged my firearm um, as he continued to run on a northbound direction back across the yard. Um, I ceased discharging my firearm as the suspect threw the firearm in it from his right hand into the air as he launched into the air. I watched the firearm get thrown put my eyes back on him, did not see where the firearm landed at that point, um, kept lethal cover on him. Officer Gariga came up from my south, came online with me. Um, at this point, I knew there was other officers in the area. My task force had been in the area at that time. I knew they were in the area. I knew they weren't far away. We maintained lethal cover. Uh, Officer Gariga requested for rescue to be en route. I advised over dispatch that shots had been fired prior to that. Um, and we maintained lethal cover on the suspect until additional units arrived and were able to handcuff and uh, get the suspect in custody and also begin rendering aid. Thank you. Um, how long have you been in Zone 5? 
my whole career so far was five years. Five years. And how long have you been a field training officer? Uh, this was my first recruit in this scenario, so two years. And pr prior to this, you reviewed the policy on traffic stops and pursuits with Officer Garriga. You guys kind of went through scenarios with him. Yes, sir. I also knew about his previous experience and that he had been in uh, many pursuits prior to that. Is that a high crime area? Would you consider that a high crime area? Mike, too. Yes, uh, yeah. that area of the Nelson Street, West 5th Street area. Yes, sir. Um, you spoke about when he got out of the car, you saw an object. And then later on, you said when he separated, you recognized that it was a gun. Yes, sir. And what did you think? Of, what did you see when he got out of the car when you described an object? I, I observed that he was holding in the manner of. The, of the way that people typically use hold firearms when they're fleeing from a vehicle. Um, however, I did not 100% know there was a firearm until he entered the backyard. But Officer Garriga said, gun, gun, as we exited the vehicle. Did he make any statements after he fell to the ground to you? Not that I'm aware of, sir. And you fired four times. And you intended to fire those four times? Yes, sir. And you stopped firing because you saw him throw the gun in the air? Yes, sir. I have no further questions, Chief Short. Um, can you talk just a little bit about your, any consideration you gave to the backstop? Yes, sir, it was an open field. It was actually in between two houses. I went to my firing at the suspect. Okay, did you see any um, people in the field, pedestrian citizens? No, sir. Okay. And you mentioned you did hear Officer Garriga yell out gun? Yes, sir. No further questions. I have no questions. Chief Smith. For the record, can you tell us what a signal 12 is? Yes, it's a, it's a reckless driver is the uh, exact description. Did your weapon malfunction? It did not. You mentioned you knew the history of Officer Garriga. Is that why, or did you, I should ask, did you give him any instructions since he was a recruit? Did you tell him anything before you guys exit the vehicle? Did you tell him anything? Any, he was a recruit. Did you give him any instructions? As to whether or not to run or pursue the exactly vehicle? Exactly what, what you guys were going to do. Did you have a quick plan? Did you say anything to him? Prior to the initiation of the pursuit, maybe a day prior or two days prior, we discussed the fact that since he had previous experience, if we were to get in a pursuit, that he would be calling the pursuit. Okay, so when you took off and he went in a different direction, that was based on you knew he had experience? When Officer Garriga ran around the other side of the yes. house? I knew Officer Garriga was not in my field of fire and he was behind me somewhere, but I did not know where Officer Garriga, exactly his exact location at the time. But you were comfortable with that because of his experience? You had a recruit, and I'm trying to get to the fact that he was not with you. Were you comfortable with your recruit going in a different direction because of his experience? Yes, ma'am. I would have been, yes. Thank you. Uh, Body-worn camera. At what point did you turn your camera on? Unfortunately, I turned my camera on after the incident occurred. When I glanced down as we were uh, after Officer Gray was also holding lethal cover with me, I observed that it had not been activated. How long had you had the body worn camera prior to that? Maybe five working days. Okay, so just previously issued? Yes, sir. Okay, nothing further. If we could, I want to recall Detective Warrington to get something on the record. Okay. Uh, Just confirm that the suspects that was hit by gunfire, his DNA was found on that firearm that was located on the roof of the shed. Yes, sir. What we had done in a crime scene unit had had swabbed the firearm, the, uh, the uh, pistol grip and the trigger uh, part of it. Uh, since that, that, that swab was insufficient, FDLE, FDLE sent us back uh, a CODIS kit to Mr. Buckman, and we uh, got people swabbed from Mr. Buckman.
were both convicted and now in prison right. for this incident. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Director. If uh, we have no further uh, questions for Officer Ledyard, uh, we'll go to executive session and hear from OGC, the Academy, and the uh, gun range. Under executive session then, uh, at the end of the executive session, uh, the board will vote on three questions. Those three questions are, was the member's use of force within departmental policy? The second question is, uh, does the member need any additional situational training? And the third question is, should this case be referred to internal affairs for any further investigation? Uh, we hear from uh, a representative from OGC. I don't have any comments. Academy? No training issues by either officers in their testimony. Okay. And no issues. Okay. Uh, you want to, Chief Short, would you like to sure. start the discussion? Um, so let's talk about the pursuit first. Uh, the pursuit appears to be within policy. Um, and the fact that that was a school day during school hours uh, would keep most of the children off the street and playing on the sidewalks and so on. Uh, no issues with the pursuit. I think the decision to um, abandon the vehicle pursuit in favor of the foot pursuit of the armed subject was the right decision. And then um, the actions of the suspect obviously dictated a response from the police officers, not only being armed, but going through the entire discrimination process, um, getting all the way down to demeanor was certainly not a demeanor willing to surrender. Uh, no backstop issues. Um, evidenced by the fact that there was no collateral damage of buildings or, or citizens in the area. Um, those rounds most likely are, are buried right there in the ground in that open field. So I have um, no issues right now as we're in, in this session. I concur with uh, everything that Chief Short said. I also like to add that I know it's not normal practice for an FTO and an, a recruit to separate uh, but in this situation with Officer Garriga's past extensive history uh, with his prior experience, um, I don't have an issue with them splitting off and the tactics they used during that uh, traffic stop. I would like to uh, just make it uh, clear, uh, the command and control, once the two of you all were together, uh, and then the third officer coming up and then working to handcuff the uh, suspect to render aid, well-coordinated and uh, good work. No comments. Um, my additional issue was the body-worn camera having been issued just uh, a few days prior to this incident. Uh, it's a mu muscle memory issue. Uh, we've, we've seen this a number of times uh, with our policy initiation. Uh, it sometimes takes officers a little while to get used to turning that on, similar to when they turn the radio on when they get out of the police car. Uh, so. I, I think the explanation is uh, sufficient to say there is no policy violation for the BWC. And if we have, don't have any more discussion, I'll go ahead with the vote. Uh, first uh, question, was the member's use of force policy within departmental policy? Yes, it was. Yes. 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 And I am also a yes. The second question is, does the member need any additional situational training? No, he does not. No. 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 I'm also no. And should this case be referred to internal affairs for any further investigation? No, it should not. No. 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 And I'm also a no. Again, these uh, recommendations will be summarized and sent to the sheriff. Ultimately, it's the sheriff's decision on what, if any additional steps he'll take in regards to this case. And if we have nothing further, it is 1041, and we are adjourned.